Good evening. I'm Jordan Beagle. And I'm Jaylon Riley, and welcome to the first episode of 300 College Street TV. Today, we'll be keeping you guys up to date on the latest news in entertainment, sports, music, the hottest new movies, and what's been going on on campus. We also have a feature story on the newest development in education in the alumni spotlight. First up, we have Jordan with the iHeartRadio Awards summary. On March 5, 2017, the fourth annual iHeartRadio Music Awards aired on TBS to recognize iHeartRadio's most popular artists and their music for the past year, which determined the network's listeners. Each year, many viewers noticed that this may not be one of the most laid-back award shows based on the setting. It is not as uptight as the formal Grammy show. The show was hosted by Ryan Seacrest. Their performances by Big Sean, Ed Sheridan, and also the younger sister of Miley Cyrus, Noah Cyrus. Bruno Mars took home the iHeartRadio Innovator Award, and Justin Timberlake won for Song of the Year for Can't Stop This Feeling. Again, I'm Jordan Beagle, and that was your entertainment report. Looking to have a great time and save money? Look no further other than your local movie theaters. Jordan Huff is here to give you the 411 on the biggest movies that hit the box office this month. Here are some of the biggest blockbusters that have recently graced the silver screens around the world. The psycho horror film Get Out graces the top of our list and in racking in 33 million in its opening week, also being Jordan Peele's horror director's debut. Next on our list is the new action installment to Marvel's X-Men universe, Logan. It is sure to please fans of superhero action and those new to the series as well. If you're looking for something that the kids will enjoy in a film packed with enough innocent humor for all ages, look no further than the Lego Batman movie. Rounding out our list is the bio-epic film Hidden Figures, giving an account of the unsung heroes responsible for America's success during the space race. It is educational and entertainment for the entire family. Whether you're looking for action and explosions or laughs galore, you're in for a treat. Take a trip to your local theater. It's March, so you know what that means. March Madness, the NCAA Men's College Basketball Championship Tournament is right around the corner. 68 college basketball teams will be featured in one tournament and play for the championship trophy. It will be filled with upsets, buzzer beaters, and lots of excitement. Last year's champions, the University of Villanova Wildcats, look to make another great run at the championship trophy after they beat the University of North Carolina Tar Heels last year in the tournament. The tournament starts Tuesday, March 14th. I'm Jordan Beagle, and that's your sports report. Now to Jaylon Riley in the studio. Next, we have what's going on on campus. Last week, at the end of Black History Month, SC State students participated in their first annual Black History March in downtown Orangeburg. Here's Terrence Jones with the story. And honoring the ones that have died for, to give us what we have today, because without them, there would be no us. The students of South Carolina State University held a Black History Month march at the Student Plaza on campus. The march began on Russell Street to SC State campus. It began with the SESU Marching 101 Band with a crowd of students who were involved in the march, born in poster boards with influential African Americans who made a big impact in the world. Sororities on campus also came out to show their support. Not to remember all the accomplishments of our people and the people who have made contributions to society. We don't get a lot of credit for the things that we, that we do, so Black History is basically our time to remember the important things that we have contributed to this world. Reporting, I'm Terrence Jones at 300 College Street TV. Thank you, Terrence, for that great story. Now we have a breaking news press release coming from Washington, D.C. Armstrong Williams, chairman of Howard Stark Holdings, Journalism Foundation Incorporated, and South Carolina State University have entered into a definite gift agreement under which Howard Stark Holdings Foundation will create the Armstrong Williams Broadcast Scholarship Program via a commitment of $250,000 to SC State's communication and journalism program. Jaylon Riley had the time to sit down with alumni of South Carolina State University to speak upon his experience of the communications program and the scholarship that we are receiving. Hi, my name is Jaylon Riley, here with 300 College Street TV, and today on our Alumni Spotlight segment, I'm here with Paul Harris. 
Hi, Paul. How are you? I'm good. How are you doing? So can you tell us a little bit about yourself, what, like when you graduated, what you did while you were at State, what do you do now, just those type of things. Okay, well, I enrolled at State for the 2009-2010 school term. I graduated from broadcasting, a major in broadcasting communications in 2013. We were the first class to graduate. The major came to fruition in 2010. Um, now I'm currently working at a radio station, local here in Orangeburg, WOCS, and it's also a television network as well called New Perceptions Media, which is broadcasted out of the district office in Orangeburg, South Carolina. So I am the manager and also associate producer and lead videographer. So can you tell us a little bit how the program was while you were here, since you guys were just starting out, everything was brand new, so right. I know you guys had to rough it out with a, with a limited equipment, so can you tell us a little bit about that? Right, so uh, 2010, when it came about, uh, we really didn't have nothing, just had teachers, we had some editing software, but we didn't really have cameras yet. Cameras didn't really come to about until 2011, and then we had uh, teachers like Mr. Powell, um, Dr. Rahman, Mr. Mims was at Claflin now, they taught us how to shoot video and edit software. So that's kind of where we started first, learning how to do video work. And even though it isn't how it is now, it was still a good start for the program. Because I see some of the cameras that are currently out right now, they're still the same cameras we first used in the beginning. And so when you guys were first getting started, and you said y'all were limited on equipment, and when y'all didn't really get them until, what, like your, that was your sophomore year? Uh, it was going into my junior year. So what did you guys do before then for, like, projects and things since y'all didn't really have cameras? Like, how yeah, was it? <laughs> we did a lot of book work, actually. Uh, oh, wow. We learned how to do script writing, mm -hmm. uh, like for news stories. We learned how to write commercials and stuff like that. But eventually, when we got the cameras, we went out to the field, we shot uh, news stories, we shot many documentaries, and also we went around the city of Orangeburg and also on campus to try to find something. Mm -hmm. yeah. And see, I hear horror stories from all the old alumni about yeah. the big reels that you guys had to like load yourselves. Yeah, I, th I thought I actually showed you that. It was one of my <laughs> uh, first reels. But yeah, we did a horror story. I know I did a horror story one time, and uh, we went around here, Guinea. Uh, we had it scripted, and we found, you know, amateur uh, actors, which were our students. <laughs> and we just shot many two, three-minute horror stories. It was pretty cool. Oh, wow. So can you tell us, as an alumni, I know you've been looking around and seeing, like, all the things we have in here now. Mm -hmm. So where do you see the future of the program heading, or what are some things you would like to see for the program to have for the future incoming people that want to do broadcasting or journalism while we're all communication so yeah well i think the program is on a pretty good track right now like recently we saw in the paper where armstrong williams a former alum south Carolina state donated two hundred fifty thousand dollars to the communication program only for scholarships mm -hmm. and i think the uh communications program is like number one when it comes to uh students wanting to major in that so with this tv studio i've seen so far like it's a big it's a big rise. I mean, I wouldn't fathom something like this coming this quick because we didn't have this. We didn't have all the lights, all the teleprompters, all the cameras. So it's pretty cool the direction it's going. Uh, so the TV aspect is pretty good. The radio aspect on campus needs to improve. Maybe new management need, maybe needs to uh, come in and do something better with that. But uh, other than that, I think the communication program is in the right direction. They have the right leadership and they have uh, good professors as well leading the way for the students. Okay, and just to wrap up, can you give us a little advice for the people that are either about to graduate <laughs> that's looking like <laughs> some freshmen or just simple advice for us? Because I know you're, you're in your master's degree mm -hmm. program now, so yeah. you're about to finish up with that. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, it's dog eat dog world, though, as I look right into the camera telling you guys that. Because uh, broadcasting, it's a major where, yeah, you may think it's pretty easy compared to other majors at the university. Well. I just mentioned, it's a dog-eat-dog -dog world out there, and there's not many spots available. So you need to grind and work hard as much as you can because there are limited spots. If you aren't able to accomplish uh, getting a job right after graduation, look at grad school. Because if you major in master's as master's communication, broadcasting, media, and you graduate with master's, that will give you a better chance to get a job opportunity. So work hard. Uh, Take this serious, for real, because if not, I know a lot of people that I actually graduated with, some have, they are successful right now in media, but some, they had to take a different direction. So. Okay, well, thank you so much for coming to talk to us today, Paul. And again, I'm Jalen Riley here with Paul Harris, and this has been our Alumni Spotlight. <laughs>
That concludes our show for 300 College Street TV. I'm Jordan Beagle. And I'm Jaylon Riley. Thank you guys for watching and make sure you tune in to our next episode.